This is ON17P21 question 2. If you have never tried this question, I highly recommend you pause the video right now. No spoilers. Try and see how far can you get all the way to the end. Come back and then look through how to actually do this one. So what we have here is a variation of velocity of two cars. Car P and car Q. The cars travel in the same direction along a straight road. So you can imagine there's a car P and a car Q, they're all traveling in one direction. Car P passes car Q at time T0. So in this moment of time, they're aligned. T0. One car is at rest. Uh. One car is already moving super fast speed. So this one is going to be at 20 meters per second. The other car is like, I'm, I just started. I'm, I'm at 0 meters per second. So of course, P is going to shoot ahead. But what do we have to find here in the first part? The speed limit for the cars on the road is 100 km per hour. State and explain whether car Q exceeds the speed limit or not. Wait a second. This velocity is in meters per second. But what they gave us here is 100 km per hour. We need to convert that. How do you convert km per hour to meters per second? By the way, in case you didn't know, if you haven't learned how to drive yet, car's speedometer, when you see how fast you're going, is usually in kilometers per hour. Okay, here's my tip. If you're not sure how to do, let's convert these to meter per second and see, and then we'll check the graph and see if the car exceeds or not. Okay, so what you can do is, is what I call the chain conversion. You write out the unit first. 100 kilometer per hour. That's what you want to convert. Then you, you look at what units you want to get rid of. Let's convert the KM first. To get rid of KM, I need to put KM at the bottom. Why? So that KM and KM can cancel out. You want to convert KM to what? Meters, right? So I put meters above. 1 KM is 1,000 meters. And there, I have my first conversion done. So KM unit is gone. We're going to convert what else? Hours. Okay, so we had another conversion chain. Hours we're going to get rid of, so I'm going to put it on top, so that one is on top, one is below, it's gone. Hours we want to convert to seconds, because meters per second, right? So one hour is how many seconds? Ah? One hour, 60 minutes, 60 seconds, 3600. At the end of the day, you should get about 27.7 meters per second. How do I know it's meters per second? Because uh, the only units that left here is meter and second. Ta-da! Chain conversion done. You can use this for any unit conversion. So I'm going to say, all right, car Q, right? Let's do some inspection time. What's the fastest that car Q goes at? 30? Oh, oh. So car Q, the maximum speed is 30 meters per second. Whoops! The speed limit is 27.7. So it looks like you... Have <clears throat> Excuse me. We say yes. Car Q uh, exceeds the speed limit. Or you can also say uh, the speed limit is what? You can mention uh, 27 or 28 roughly meters per second as its maximum speed is 30 meters per second. So if you talk about those main points, it's... It's okay. You can also compare to kilometer per hour. You convert the maximum to kilometer per hour or meter per second. Just compare, okay? Then next, we need to calculate the acceleration of car P. We have a graph, right? So what we could do is, if you have a graph of velocity against time, acceleration is V minus U over T. It's basically finding the gradient of graph. So it's kind of a reminder. Gradient of vt graph by the way this equation is a is a rearranged version of a stuva equation that we looked at earlier so v equals to u plus at looks familiar right rearranged become that law so we're going to see the expression of car p which is constant all the way p uh, okay i guess you could just pick a triangle and just do this and say let's find the gradient change in velocity over change in time. 12 seconds. What's the change in velocity? Can I read this one? 21, 22, 23, 24. 
So 20 increased to 24 over 12 seconds. Let's write down the gradient. So A equals to V minus U over T, which is also gradient. Oh, I already wrote gradient. What am I doing? So we're going to minus it out here. This will be 24 minus 20. And how long did it take? 12 seconds. 12 minus 0. By the way, this is uh, going to be in seconds and this is in meters per second. So do a quick unit check. Meters divided by meter per second divided by second. Oh, meter per second squared. Okay, very good. This one, when we divide out, you should get a, a number that looks very nice. 1 over 3. But then, physics cannot write fraction. You must write a ratio. So don't write this. Go for 0 0.3333333, although it's not nice. And final answer, we stick to 2SF. So I'm going to write here a reminder. Big, big warning. No fractions in physics. In maths, you go and do fractions in maths. In physics, we like the, the, the decimals. So we're going to write this as 2SF or 3SF. That's fine. So one mark comes from the idea that you know what is acceleration in terms of the VT graph. Either gradient or you write this equation now and you're like, oh, I know that you understand this. Then final answer, you plug in. That's A1 mark. Okay, let's move on. What else we need to find from this graph? Determine the distance between the two cars at 12 seconds. What is distance from the VT graph? If you have a velocity time graph, remember, distance is going to be the area under the VT graph at 12 seconds. Uh, we got to see how far they travel. So you could, I mean, you could use other equations, but if you want to analyze the graph, you got a big area to analyze. Under P, you have, where's P? Ooh, a very big area. Look at this whole thing. This whole area is area under P. This displacement or distance, you know what? I'm just going to label as P. Displacement of P, there we go. Car Q is a little bit different area. I'm going to give it a, let's give it a light blue shading. So Car Q has traveled a different distance, which is this triangle area right here. Got to do some nice shadings. So you can find the area of each of these. Let's do that. The first one is, let's do SP first. These are also a Stuva equation. Well, what we're going to use now is... That's where we get the equation from, right? So let's do S, P. What color is P? Orange. Okay. Displacement of P is a trapezium, which is also a Stuva equation that we looked at earlier in the theory video. Half U plus V times T. Looks familiar, right? This is the area of trapezium. So half initial speed. We start at 20. This is U. So we write 20. Final speed, 24, right? This is V. Okay, so 20 plus 24 times how long? 12 seconds. Done. This will give us 264 meters. That is how far car P has traveled in 12 seconds. We do the same thing for car Q, which is the area. Hmm, what's the area here? This one, uh, Q is triangle. So we can use a triangle. Okay, let's do that. So this will be half times time times height. Mm. Or you could use u, u plus v times t. Can also la. It's just that your u is zero, so it's just half vt. Lo. Half base times height. Ah, yeah. Half 30, which is the final velocity here, times time, 12 seconds later. This, we will get a distance of 180 meters. But we're not done yet. We're not done yet. We just found the displacement. What they want is the distance between both cars. One car travel 264. The other travel only 180. Not very far. So then the last step is to find the distance between. I'm going to take, uh, let's call this distance D. S P minus S Q. So 264 minus 180 that's going to give us 84 meters. That's how far apart they are. And let's write this down here. I guess we could stick to 2SF. Everything looks like a 2SF game. So we're going to stick to 2SF. 84 
meters. Oh, no need to write meters. Already got three marks here. First one is you find SP. How far did car P go? Second one, you find how far did car Q go? These C1 marks are what I call compensatory marks. Um, sometimes they're given to equation, sometimes to working. So make sure you write your equation and working just to be safe. Then the last one is you minus and then you find the answer. Ah, this is the last one. So if you find it hard to imagine what is going on, you draw a picture. Lor. That means I can't understand. Okay, never mind, never mind. You imagine this is the road. After 12 seconds, car P is quite ahead already. Car P is here. Beep, 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 beep. Moving this way. Car Q is a little bit lagging behind. Maybe somewhere here. Q. Beep, 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 beep. So if this is our 0 meters, Q will be somewhere at 180 meters. P will be somewhere at 264 meters. And you want to find distance? This is the distance between them. All right. Let's move on to the next section. Now this is where you got to think carefully about the question. This is where the trick comes in. From 12 seconds onwards, this screenshot that we draw in the top right, this is at 12 seconds, ah. Huh? But now we're looking at after 12 seconds. What happens? Something new is happening. The velocity of each car remains constant at its value once it's 12 seconds onward. Determine the time where car Q will pass car P. How is it possible? This one is lagging behind. How come it can pass one? Let's go back to the velocity graph a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. 12 seconds onwards, they are constant speed, which means car Q is going to keep going at, what was it, 30? Uh, so I can draw a straight line. No? If I want to continue the graph, it's going to be straight line all the way. 30 meters per second. So increase, 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 accelerate, and then suddenly flat line. Car P though, it's going to be a little bit slower. This one will keep going at 24 meters per second. So that's how the graph will look like. And will they catch up? Yeah, let's go back to the picture. Car P is 24 meters per second. Car Q. Wow, going to be fast. Leh. 30 meters per second. Imagine these two cars chasing each other on the road. Will car Q catch up? Definitely. It's going faster. It just needs some time to catch up. That's what we want to find. <sighs> so how do we find this? Ah? If you, if you haven't tried this, you can pause the video, faster try this part D. There are a few methods to do this. Two methods. I'm going to show one method first, which is a slightly less maths involved, and then the second one, which is a little bit more. Both can be different ways. I highly suggest you know how to do both. The first method says, if you consider these two cars moving towards each other, let's redraw it down here. There are two nice cars. Uh, and these two cars are how far apart again? 84 meters apart. Okay, so here to here is a distance of 84 meters. In order for the car to pass, car Q to pass P, you need to close it so that the distance between them is now zero. So they are aligned already. Lah. One way to think of it is to use the what I call the relative velocity method. What is relative velocity? Okay, imagine you close your eyes. You're on the road in your family's car or somewhere and the cars around you are all traveling at the same speed on the highway, for example. And you look around, it looks like the cars are not moving because you and the car next to you all traveling at the same speed. That is called relative velocity, which is zero. So we can treat these two cars with some kind of relative velocity thing. Let's say I choose this to be zero meter per second reference. That means... The other car, in reference to P, how much faster is it? Ah? 30 minus 24. Oh, 6 meters per second. Relative to car P. As I pretend car P is not moving. My Q is as if it is coming closer. 6 meters per second. 6 meters per second. How long will it take to cover 84 meters? So this is the relative uh, velocity method. So I can say, I guess, the difference in velocities is going to be 30 minus 24. That gives you your 6, which is your relative velocity. So let's write that out. 
and you need to cover 84 meters. So the car behind you is coming closer, 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 6 meters per second. You want to cover 84? We got to say, hmm, to close the distance between the cars, we will say, okay, velocity, or say distance, no, like velocity. What's the equation you all like to use? Uh? Ah, distance equals to velocity times time. There's no acceleration involved here, so no AT square, nothing. Just S equals to VT. So S, 84 meters, we want to cover in 6 meters per second. How long does that take? So 84 divided by 6 is what? Uh? That gives us 14 seconds. Okay, so this is the time needed to close that 84 meters. Six, uh, 14 seconds. So the answer is 14. Uh. Wait, 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 wait. This one is to close a distance between them. So it's like a delta t. And remember, we are looking at the overall picture, right? So from 12 seconds onward, plus another 24. Oh, okay, okay. So we need to say the total, the actual time. Actual time t is going to be, at first we already 12 seconds, ma. Then only they have the car remain car velocity remain constant. So that is 14 seconds later, only they pass each other just nicely. And this will be 26 seconds in total. So this one is the correct answer, 26. Okay, so if you need to relook that again, go digest it to see this method, velo relative velocity, stare at things moving if you need to. I'll tell you where the marks come from. If you use this method and you find some kind of difference in V, this is one mark, and of course you find the actual time, that's 26, then that will be the final mark. Let's look at a very quick animation to help you visualize what is happening here. Here are the two cars again. One is P, moving hmm, kind of slower, but it's ahead. And then Q is behind, but it's moving faster, it's going to catch up. So I'm going to give it maybe 12, uh, 14 seconds. And then they will go, eventually they will reach the same displacement right on this side. And that's when you say, oh, you have passed, the car have passed each other already. Okay, so you can replay this one and try to imagine your head. This one is not constant velocity, like the animation, but you can make it constant. So the other method actually relies on this fact that once you pass each other, you see here, they should have the same displacement right here. And actually, the displacement is about 600 meter. How do we know that? Uh? How do we even find how long it takes using this method where they have the same displacement. So method two, I'm going to write here or and use green color to be a little bit different. Method two says, when you want these two cars to pass each other, that means the displacement of Q must be the same as displacement P. They are side by side. But how to find the displacement? Uh? Uh, maybe we can do this. There's a part where you accelerate and the part where you have constant velocity. The first part, we already know that they travel, how far? 1 travel 264, 1 travel 180. That one we already know. So for one part, let's say car Q, we know that the displacement of Q, let's write this here, displacement of Q, is going to be original, already 180, ma, plus additional distance, so velocity times time. VQ times the additional time after that. Okay, this is how we can find the displacement of Q. Let's plug it in. So we have 180 already traveled plus, how fast is Q to moving again? Oh, 30, yes. See the picture on the left. 30 times an extra time. How long do you need? I don't know. I'm just going to put the T there. Then we do the same for P. At this point, 12 seconds, P has already traveled, how far? 264 meters, I can see on the, the left side over there. So I'm going to write here, you have already traveled 264. How much more do you travel? Hmm. Or how much more do you need? The velocity is going to be 24 times a certain time interval after that. I'll put a bracket there to remind ourselves that it's a time interval. And now we can solve the values. So you should get to the same conclusion where you have 
30 minus 24 times time equals to 264 minus 180, which is 84. So I, uh, you still get 60, 6 delta t, oops, sorry, forgot the delta. Too excited. Equals to 84. Hey, you also get delta t is 14 seconds. Same as the other side here. Where's the 14 seconds? Ah, yes, 14 seconds. So it's the same concept. It's just different ways to think about it. Best if you know how to think of it in both ways. So you might be wondering, oh, actually, oh, how does the graph look like? Just in case they ask you in the MCQ, oh, let's look at the graph to close up this question. So the velocity graph looks like this. They, one car, you know, start from zero and then wow, very fast. The other car sort of had a good start, but then eventually got stuck at 24 and didn't really increase anymore. If I want to draw uh, the displacement graphs, it's going to be a curve, which looks something like this. So we got P and Q. P is the red color one. Q is the blue. Miss, how you know the graph look like this? I use the Stuva equation. S equals to UT plus half AT square. I sub in the values. I throw it in the graph. So if you want to see how it tracks over time, over time, I mean, the, the vertical line is time. La. The car will go faster, 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 faster. Red P is generally ahead until some point. Okay. So, but we only want to stop at 12 seconds. So the graph, this whole beautiful quadratic graphs, two of them, two curves, need to be stopped at 12 seconds. So they kind of get chopped off at 12. All right. So what happens at 12? This is about undefined. Great. Wonderful. Okay. You forgot to check the value. Leh. At 12 seconds, P is at 264. Hey, we found the value just now. And Q is at 180. Okay. Uh. Let's, we found the value just now. Okay. Now we do the limiting. Okay. Stop at 12. Stop at 12. Why stop at 12? Because after 12, there is no more acceleration. It's just constant velocity. Constant velocity means constant gradient because velocity is gradient. So I'm going to turn on this part. Uh, don't worry about the equation here. I do this so we can see. Uh. So after 12, it's going to be two straight lines, which is on the right side of this dotted line. So before this, got acceleration, graph look like this. After that, no more acceleration, all straight line. Now we can do the, the pull, pull the slider around and see. Okay. So where will they overlap? Car P generally is going to be ahead all the way until this point. At T equals to 26. That's the answer we found just now. Then both of these cars will be side by side. Side by side. And they'll be at 600 meters of displacement. Okay. So if you're curious how the graph looks like, this is a good practice to look at. You can play with the link down in the description below or in the notes and explore for yourself. Well, that's all for this question. I will see you in the next one.